What's going on everybody? Welcome back to episode number 7 of my ultimate walkthrough guide for Bloodborne. Today we're going to be going to Yahar Ghoul. I guess that's how it's pronounced. And we're going to do some work there. We'll finish that area as much of it as we can. Uh, but before that, we have to encounter a fight by talking to NPC Eileen and then going back to the Odin tomb. All right. So first what we want to do is hit this and go to Cathedral Ward. Okay, and once we're here, we're going to just head straight out the front. And immediately to our left should be Eileen. Oh, hello there. Perfect timing. I must warn you not to go near the tomb below Erden Chapel in the Cathedral Ward. Henrik, an old hunter, has gone mad. And he's my mark. Okay, so as you can see, initiating this conversation gives us the shh gesture. And she'll continue to basically repeat the similar thing that she just said. Don't go near the tomb below Erden Chapel in the I have been. Slight variation in what she says, but it's the same message overall. So after you get that information, we're just simply going to head back here. You can close the game and reload it, or you can go back to the Hunter's Dream and then return. I think it's a little bit faster to do it this way, so that's typically what I'll do. Okay, so once you load back into the game, you're just going to head out the back end. We're going to return to Odin's Tomb. Don't fall down this. This is a steep descent. So you're going to want to slide down. And if you look down here, you should be able to see Henrik. There he is. He's got kind of this yellowish armor. And there's a couple reasons why we want to do this. Of course we want to do this for the natural progression of the quest line, but also that attire that they're wearing is very high in bolt resistance, and the next boss that we're going to face deals a lot of bolt damage, so that's definitely a set we want to consider. Okay. So what I like to do is the same approach that I had with Father Gascoin. So just get them to see you, and then head over to that same area that we fought him over here. Now, eventually, Eileen's going to join the fight. So we can just kind of stall right here. And then she's going to run in. Oh, that was a big hit. So we can just let her deal damage now. We started everything off. Sometimes I'll help her. The problem is she's fighting, like, right on top of him. So it's really easy to damage them both. What I like to do is try to charge up attack if I can see an opportunity for one. And then just lock him in. Ooh. Alright. I'm not sure if she can die. I've never just sat there and waited it out forever. Um, I think she can't lose the fight, but I'm not certain. We don't get to see her health unless we make her an enemy somehow. Alright, so go ahead and grab the rune from them the air rune we'll take a look at this real quick it says visceral attacks grant more blood echoes this is going to be a rune that we'll, we'll want to equip as well as there's another rune that we'll pick up that'll give us more blood echoes just in general so those are going to be two runes that we definitely want to consider um, using especially early on while we're still working on Leveling up and upgrading materials. Alright. So let's go ahead and talk to Eileen. That wasn't necessary of you. But you have my thanks. We made it with our lives. You're not bad at all. You must have killed Gascoigne as well then. He was falling apart. I'm sure it had to be done but try to keep your hands clean. A hunter should hunt beasts. 
leave the hunting of hunters to me. <laughs> All right, now we get the gesture approval. So we've gotten quite a lot from her so far, and we want to continue along with her quest. Um, there's there's kind of two different ways you can go about it. You can make her an enemy, or you can keep her an ally. And we're going the uh, way of keeping her an ally, because it's more fruitful for us. All right. So if we talk to her, she just repeats the last phrase of what she said to us. So after that, we can kind of head out. So what we're going to do is go back to the hunter's dream. And we're going to make sure that we visit this merchant station right here. And we want to get Henrix set. Now, if you don't want to buy Henrik's set, or for whatever reason you don't have the insight to afford it, what you can do is wear the um, black church attire. It's got good bolt resistance. So does Father Gascoigne's gear as well. So we're currently wearing Gascoigne stuff, but we actually want to wear the black church uniform right now because we're going to engage with an NPC that positively responds to this set. So it's important to have this. But if you don't have Henrik set, this is definitely the alternative that you want to wear for the boss fight anyway. So it kind of kind of works perfectly. Okay. So we're going to wear this for a little while. Now what we're going to do is if you want to upgrade or you got any other things you need to do, go ahead and do that. We're basically about to go to an enemy and intentionally die so we want to spend our blood echoes as best we can i don't think we have enough to upgrade or to level up rather so this is one of those rare opportunities where i'm actually probably going to use some of my cold blood to get myself over the hump we'll take a look at some of these items over here just to see if i could potentially spend on those there's usually something worth buying. Specifically things like fire paper, upgrade materials, things like that. So I might consider getting some weapons that I don't currently own. Um, let's take a look at what I have. Okay. So we can get the cane. I mean, it's just opportunity to kind of get all the things that you don't already own. So I think I'm going to do that. That way I don't have materials in later episodes that you guys don't have. Um, like fire, like extra fire paper or abundance of certain things that I'm relying on using in the episode. I'll basically try to make sure that I have only things that I've acquired naturally through playing the game. And then instruct you to buy something if we are going to use that by doing so myself. Okay, so we got the cane. Um, we can take a look at the guns here. I don't think I bought the repeating pistol, but I'm not entirely sure. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and spend the rest on some upgrade shards here. And then we've got 500, so let's go ahead and buy one of these blood vials. Great. You, you honestly, you want to spend everything because you're going to lose it. It's not something that you can get back, um, not for a minute at least. I, I'm a, I'm guessing that your blood echoes could be at the same place at which you, you were killed, but they're going to take us to a whole nother area. So the likeliness of you going back to get them is probably not that great. All right, so we're going to go to the Cathedral Ward. Okay. So we're going to head straight out again. And as you can see, Eileen is gone now, as she should be. Um, go ahead and kill this bird here. Get some free pebbles. And now what we're going to do is just intentionally die to this man right here. These are one of the kidnappers. Um, they are super strong. It's funny when you just stand there and try to die. These enemies just suck at killing you. It's, it's really weird. 
You could be trying your hardest to survive and they'll one-shot you, but if you just stand there asking to die, they suck. Never understood it. Okay, so this is an important moment in the game because it's one of the rare instances where dying actually takes you somewhere else. It does so in the beginning when you first die, it takes you to the hunter's dream. So that's why you're kind of supposed to die to the beast. But in this instance, no matter what point you are in the game, if you die to one of these kidnappers for the first time, you end up here. And you may have ended up here before by accidentally engaging in combat with one of these guys and getting killed by them. So you can get out of here rather quickly. And I'm going to show you how if you get in over your head, but we're, we're well prepared for this zone. This is exactly where we want to be right now. So this door is already open. You don't need to be afraid of this area that we're in right now. There's no enemies here. So you can just go ahead and grab this loot and read this message. Madmen toil surreptitiously in rituals to beckon the moon uncover their secrets interesting all right so you can go down here actually there's no enemies here as well this is where the npc is that we're wearing this gear for you can hear her praying so this is how we befriend her she feels comfortable seeing that we're a man of the cloth church you've come to save me oh thank you dear saint i have no words to express my relief you can take this at least it's sure to please an upstanding member of the church like you oh thank you so much dear gods okay we're going to talk to her a couple more times thank you so much I was seized on the street by the hulking brute in the cathedral ward and locked up here. There were many others, but they've been taken away. And I've heard moans echoing in the distance ever since. So, the hunt is on tonight. Then the streets are perilous and every door will be shut tight. Perhaps it isn't my place to ask, but do you know somewhere that might take me in? Alright, here we definitely want to tell her about the Odin Chapel. We do want her to survive. If we send her to Yosefka's clinic, she will not last. Oh, thank you so much. I'll set out as soon as I can. I pray for success on your hunt. Kind hunter. Okay, so this is something important to pay attention to. This NPC will return to Odin Chapel. She is basically the exact opposite of the other female that's there named Ariana. You will remember her as the prostitute. We currently have her blood equipped, so this is important to pay attention to. You can only take four blood vials from Ariana while this female NPC is at the the ch is at the uh, church so if she sees you accept more than four blood vials from Ariana she will actually murder her we don't want that it's very important that Ariana does not die so keep that in mind I to to basically guarantee that that doesn't happen once I communicate with this NPC and send her back to the church I don't ever accept blood from Ariana again because we can get blood from this lady right here. So she basically replaces what Ariana does for us and we can still gain the benefit of what Ariana is going to give to us later. So we need to make sure that we don't upset this woman. She is a psycho and she will kill, kill Ariana because she's highly offended by her prostitute blood. All right. Grab the cold blood and we can head out of this area. It's 
So as I was saying earlier, if you end up in this zone before you want to, or if you just want to return back to the hunter's dream quickly, let's say you forgot something, you don't have this attire set for some reason and you need to go locate it. What you're going to do slow all right <laughs> should have let that guy cross i thought i thought we took long enough for him to get out of the way so basically at the top of the stairs is the um is the lantern that we want let's approach from this direction they're probably still going to be aggroed on us but that's okay we do want to fight them solo oh no nope, they gave up so as you can see here both enemies meet in the center of the room that's kind of where we want them to be right now because we're not too interested in the combat. But when we do want to fight them, you basically want to fight them after transporting to this lantern here because that one that just noticed us will be about right here and we can attack them quickly and fight them 1v1 and then we can deal with that other kidnapper 1v1 as well. So that's really important to notice. All right, so... What you're going to do here is light the lamp. And we're actually going to start from this area here. So we're going to do exactly what I just said. So we're just going to return to the hunter's dream. All right. So one thing that we can do just to double check is we can go back to the cathedral ward and see if our uh, blood echoes happen to be there. We also, of course, have another reason to return here. We can see if the lady has come over to the chapel, and she has. So now we can talk to her. Oh, brave hunter. You're alive. Thank you very much. So we get the church bow. Of course, it has the female in parentheses over here, which I guess, okay. The tower is in disarray, but there are still people here. Together we await the help of the healing church. I cannot begin to express my gratitude to you. The only thing that I can offer is my own lowly blood. If it would suffice. Okay, so I'm not sure if we can also receive her blood treatment while we've got the blood of Ariana in our inventory. I'm going to try. Yeah, we can't. So, even though they're different items technically, we can only have one in our inventory at a time. So once we use the blood of Ariana, we can go ahead and accept her blood as well. Ah, brave hunter. What is it? Have you renewed thoughts on this matter? F forgive me, I, I should have known better. What would a brave hunter do with lowly blood like mine? Please, forget I even ask. Okay, so this is not a big deal either way. If you ever accept blood, it's fine. If you refuse blood, there's no repercussion to that either. Um, but again, remember, do not accept blood from her more than four times while she is here. And you'll notice if you start talking to her and accept blood, You'll see her actually lean over and look at you. It's really funny. All right. So once we have a new NPC in the church, we want to talk to this person here. Oh, the hunter. Alive and well at that. Another one you sent made it here safe and sound. This place is a haven now for so many. Thanks to you. I'm overjoyed, really, that you'd even give me the time of day. I don't suppose there's anybody out there worth saving anymore. But you did all you could. And so many owe you so much. Amazing, really. Not because you're a hunter, but because you're you. <laughs> oh, makes me think. Once dawn breaks, maybe I can just, you know, start over. 
Makes it easier to bear all of this, you see. You've made life easier. Thank you. If you please, kind hunter, when the night of the hunt passes, suppose we could be friends, maybe? Now, I know I hardly deserve it, but, well, I had to just ask, you know. <laughs> Out of line. Yes. Perhaps so. But, well, give it a thought. If you wouldn't mind, of course. <laughs> Alright, so an interesting dialogue to say the least. It is funny because the game continually kind of reminds you that you probably made a mistake the first time you played this, or if you weren't following a guide and realized that this person was friendly because they give you all the reason to think that they're actually a bad person. Now, they do say something that's kind of foreshadowing, saying that we've saved everybody that's worth saving, which is actually true, because we're going to come across another NPC that you would think we should help, but we absolutely should not, so we don't send them here, and I'll remind you of that when that occurs. But that's a nice little tidbit of information there that they drop for us. Okay. So, I just want to see if the blood echoes are here. Now, we spent our blood echoes before we died. So, it's not a big deal. We only had some that we, we got from the crow when we killed it. So, I don't care about... Yeah, so, you can see the blood echoes are there. So, if you for whatever reason, didn't spend your blood echoes and want to come back to get them from this enemy, that's how you'll do it. So, I like to fight these guys with my axe extended. It makes it a little bit easier. They're really tough enemies. They're basically going to two-shot you. Um, so, I try to charge up an attack when you originally get into combat with them because they start off a little bit passive. But after you hit them once, they're going to get way faster. They're not going to do those slow walks anymore. Now, as dangerous as these dudes are, they have huge rewards. You're constantly getting upgrade materials by defeating them. So I highly suggest when you get them in one-on-one -on -one situations, go ahead and defeat them. All right, so to get back to where we want to go, we have to return to the Hunter's Dream. Once we're at the Hunter's Dream, we're going to go to this third headstone here, and we're going to go to the Hypogean Gowl. Don't quote me on that. I'm trying my best. All right, so like I said, when we arrive here, we can quickly get into combat with this one. Just like we discussed, I like to charge up. Extended Axe does a good job. Puts us in a great position early on to win this fight quickly. And as you see, upgrade materials. So very profitable to fight these enemies. Now you can fight them when there's two of them together. Um, you'll do a much better job when you have an extended weapon like this, and I suggest using the L2 attack. That way you can hit both of them simultaneously and still keep your distance. But, of course, if you can solo them, it's much better that way. Nightmarish rituals crave a newborn. Find one and silence its harrowing cry. So yeah. We can't open these doors from here. There's the same one on the other side. But we will be able to open this one um, while we're here on the other end of it, of course. So, let's continue down here, and we're going to fight this enemy. We can't really sneak around them, so you just got to deal with fighting them face on. But like I said, they start off slow. I charged that up a little bit too early, but that's okay. You're almost always going to get an opportunity to do that. Oh, good move. Okay. 
You can see I'm extremely careful when I fight those enemies. Like I said, they do huge damage. So here is the moon rune. Let's go around this side because there is an enemy here. You can see them right there. So I just like to sneak up. Sneaky sneak. Now these enemies typically like to grab you and uh, they're kind of like the Witch of Hemwick where they'll pull out a bladed weapon and deal a shit ton of damage from their grab. So you want to avoid that at all costs if you can ever get behind them or pretty much any enemy for that matter. That's how you want to do it. But they're very weak as well. They'll pretty much die to two regular attacks so you could just rush them as well. Whatever suits your style. All right, so we do have this other rune here. We can take a look at that as well. Acquire more blood echoes just by having it equipped. This is one I highly suggest because you're constantly going to benefit from that. It's definitely more beneficial than the air rune. So if you want to go back to the hunter's dream and equip this, what I would suggest is um, removing your quicksilver bullet max. That's rarely going to come into play very rarely and because we have the ability to create blood bullets it's almost never needed not on this type of uh, character build at least so communion is good for us in an emergency situation but most likely not needed as well so if you want to go the most beneficial way equip lake equip air and equip moon and we'll do that the next time we have an opportunity to now there's going to be a reason that I'm going in the order that I'm going in this place and you'll understand it. Uh, but the boss is in the opposite direction. So I don't want to go get to the boss and then return back here and kill all this other stuff then go back and fight the boss because we'll have to backtrack and repeat some enemies. So I'm trying to take you through to get you all the loot first. Get us all the upgrade materials we can get. That way when we do approach the boss we're ready to fight them and as strong as we can be. So you're gonna hear one of those big old hoglets and they're just walking their way up the stairs right now. So you don't wanna make a lot of noise. What we wanna do is try to get behind them. They're very easy to fight. They do a lot of damage, but they're super easy to fight. So if you can get to the side, you can see we can kill them really quickly. Ladybug just landed on my microphone. Hold up. Okay. That ladybug is now free. Bet you thought I said I was going to kill it. Alright, so. Behold a pale blood sky. We'll go ahead and go this direction first. So there's going to be two dogs and a kidnapper. We want to get the dog's attention quickly. So what we do is kind of approach. I like to L2 the dogs because you'll kill them in one swing and you'll usually hit both. And it's a lot easier to get, um, to get them in your attack radius because they have such good dodge mechanic that the farther away you can be while you're swinging, the better. Again, this guy is going to be slow until we deal the first damage to him. So this is what we want. We're going to charge up an R2. Getting close, charge up again. It's great because they're very, like, systematic. They do the same kind of power-up roid rage shit after you hit him with that charge up attack. So it's nice. It's very um, scripted, I would say. Don't need to be worried about this area here. I know it feels like there should be some enemies here, but there really isn't. We're just gonna grab this loot. Grab this here. Now when we open this door, there's going to be two of those um, enemies that try to grab you and use their bladed attack. So be aware of that. I'm just going to open it and back away. Yeah. 
So once you... If you're aware of their presence, it's very easy to defeat them. Now, because we can't open this door from the other side, that's the only reason I'm opening this, but we're not going to go in there just yet. That leads us to the boss area, and we're going to have to go that way again. So I don't want to go... I don't want to kill everything and then have to do it again, so... Don't worry about that. We're going to get there. The audio in this zone is ridiculous. It just... It sets up a nice... Believable, like, freaky zone. But it, it's just never ending. It's crazy. Alright, so... There's gonna be... Maybe three dogs. I can't remember if there's another one hidden around there. But it's not as dangerous as the other side of this zone, so... If, if for whatever reason you went the other way first, this area is a much nicer spot to be in. So I like to do this first to get rid of the easier spots. Yeah, so we've only got two dogs. So you can pretty much just run up to them. Like I said, use the L2 attack. It's a one hit and it's going to get them if they dodge most of the time. I'm going to pick up a lot of insight here. We can't open this door. So don't worry about that. There's actually quite a few areas that we can't actually get to or access at the moment that we will come back here eventually at another time and be able to utilize those areas. All right. Don't miss this. This is an attire set. This is also fairly decent bolt resistance, but now that we picked up a new set, let's go ahead and swap over to Henrix. Like I said, this is going to be very good for us for the boss fight. You can see here 150 on the bolt resistance. The next best one is 100, I think, or 110. So, yeah, it's definitely a good set for us. Now, I will say that it doesn't have as much of an impact as you would expect it to. But it's definitely better than not having any resistance to it at all, for sure. But it doesn't mean that you can just kind of like tank all the electro damage. It's still going to do a huge amount of damage. But it'll most likely keep you alive in situations where you probably would have been killed by it before. Okay. Let's see here. This is where we came out. So we did not go down here yet. There's going to be a nightmare creature here. And there's no enemies. So don't worry about it. Normally when you see this kind of creature, you can expect some kind of trap. But it's just not the case right here. In fact, they kind of use that to their advantage by making you a little bit hesitant. And that's how they get away sometimes when you realize, oh man, there was no trap. There's no trap. So this is going to open up to our lamp post or our lantern here. So as you can see, this is very useful. Because if you died for whatever reason after completing the right hemisphere that we just did. When you spawn, you can just go out this door. And skip that half of this zone and go to the left. So it's really convenient that way. And that's why I like to take care of that part first. Or you could do the same thing if you went to the left side and cleared that out. If you died while doing the right side, you can of course split it in half but you already have access to that over there so it doesn't really benefit you as much as it does to do it the way that i am all right so you're gonna hear what sounds like a pig and it is but it's not up in in the area that we're at it's down below so you're safe up here grab the cold blood there's nothing else over here We're basically just staying up high so we don't aggro the pig yet. This area for us at the moment is a dead end. It's going to take us to a lift that we can't access. There's no loot or anything behind it, so don't worry about coming in this room. Here you can see the pig. Um, I don't do anything to it at this point. 
I'm sure you could probably drop some Molotovs on it if you tried, but to me it's a waste. I think the pigs are pretty easy. So we've got a lot of dogs in this area and then a kidnapper. We can deal with the dogs one by one pretty much. Um, just run and jump onto this thing. When you get the dog's attention, like I think this one will see us. There's another one that will see us. These two guys don't care. But you can't jump the distance to them and successfully kill them as easy as you can when you aggro some of the other dogs. So once you aggro one or two of the dogs, they'll kind of run over here and you can drop down and get an easy kill on them. Usually I don't have to throw anything. I can just get them to see me. Doesn't look like... There we go. So let's get this guy over here. Where you at, buddy? Sometimes they don't always go where you want them to go, so it doesn't work so perfectly. So we're just going to drop down. Go ahead and use my little blood vial. Don't run too far back there because you will aggro the hog. Ooh, you got me. <laughs> it didn't hit me, but it scared the shit out of me. Okay. So, as you can see, that is not something that you can really script out. It's going to play out differently depending on which dog sees you at what point. So, don't be too concerned about how that plays out. There should be another dog over here between these statues. Just make sure that you've cleared out all the enemies over here. You don't want anything to attack you from behind when you deal with this next mob. So these guys are looking at the wall area. This gives us a perfect opportunity to run up and kill both dogs with an L2. Now we're going to get back. Now, the only difference between fighting this guy now is he's not going to come at us all slow and easy. He will be aggroed. I mean, he can go slow like he is now. We're getting a little bit fortunate here. So I'm going to take advantage of that. Cool. So my guess is we didn't do enough damage to him on the first hit that he cared about going in an aggressive mode. Um, which is nice. So we got to take advantage of... His more passive phase. This weapon is very good and it's very interesting. If you fought the hunters um, where there's two of them, if you remember what I'm talking about, one had the electro mace. That's what this is here. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this weapon. It's called the Tenitris. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. A unique trick weapon contrived by Archibald, the infamous eccentric of the healing church workshop. Striking this peculiar iron morning star flail like a match generates the same blue sparks that blanket a dark beast. Unfortunately, for reasons untold, the hunters of Archibald's time did not fully take to the device. Um, this is a really cool weapon, but what you'll see here is when we look at the, at, uh, the attribute bonus, it scales with three different stats. So it is something that's not going to really scale to be super strong if you are if you have like a specific um, attribute build. But if you want to have like a diverse build, this is a good weapon for that. Um, also, it's got that, that um, bolt element to it. So you can see the damage, 40 bolt damage by default plus the physical attack. So... It is something if you've got an enemy that's weak to that damage or if you just want to enjoy having like arcane type damage on a weapon without having to use any of the bolt papers or flame papers, things like that. It's nice to have that option here. All right. Also, that thing sells for like 26k blood echoes, if I remember correctly, at the vendor. So that's a huge saving. You definitely want to grab that item. Okay, so what we'll do here now is head back. We'll kill the big old piglet. So what I like to do is um, 
I like to get it to charge me and then attack it from the side. Just one quick dodge. And I failed dodged it, but that's okay. Charging up. Once it misses you, you can land good damage on it. It's way weaker than you would expect. Way weaker than you would expect. What you can't survive is getting hit straight on. Like, if, if it's running right down the middle of the screen and you don't make a successful dodge, it's going to trample you. It'll hit you more than once and you will definitely die. So, you definitely want it to be coming at an angle and try to use any of the surroundings to your advantage. For instance, you could use some of these statues, this lamp post. Like, I could have hid behind this and definitely not taken any of that damage. But, um, you know, it's okay. I'm not certain. I think it'll destroy these carts. I'm not 100% sure, though. I, th I would imagine it would. But then again, I don't think I've ever tried to use that tactic. So I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay. Sweet. So I believe we've gotten all the loot that we can from this area. So what we'll do is go back inside. And we're going to return to the Hunter's Dream because we've got some Blood Echoes and we've got some upgrade materials. This is why we didn't kill all the other stuff um, down towards the boss because we were eventually going to do this anyways. So I didn't want to have us do double duty. Um, we do want to equip Flame Paper. So let's go ahead and get that on. We still have Yosefka's Blood Vial in case you want to use that in emergency. I like to hold on to that thing because you only get it at the beginning of the game. It's kind of cool. So if you're short on fire paper, um, I wouldn't buy any more than two. You're probably only going to need to use one. Um, if it if it extinguishes in the boss fight, which it probably will, the fight's going to last long enough to, to, to uh, most likely require the use of two. I typically don't renew it in the fight. I just continue to fight because... Usually when you're taking time to apply something like that to your weapon, it's going to open you up for damage, and I like to just play it a little bit safe and deal the damage that I can at the moment. I'm just going to check my runes and my blood gem fortifications. So we're still going to use the hunter axe, but I want to make sure that I put on the best available stuff for it. So we will be fighting a beast. So... Attack versus beast up plus 12.6 is going to benefit us in that boss fight. So we can do that there. And what we're also going to do is... Let's see here. We're going to check the other upgrades and make sure... So currently, the second one is physical attack up 7.3. Physical, um, physical attack up at full health. So this is a really, really good gemstone. Glad we have this. And then we can check the third one here. And this is our best option here as well. So that's going to be good for us right there. And we don't need to make any other changes really. So now let's look into fortification. If you want to use the Kirk Hammer, you can go ahead. I would say for this boss in particular, it's not very effective because... It's a shorter range than the axe. Um, and you'll see when we're fighting the boss, we're going to use our axe at long uh, extended range. And um, we're going to be trying to get sweeping hits. So the Kirk Hammer, if you use it in the single hand mode, is a skinny sword, which is fast, but it's hard to reach the boss. And then the hammer is unwieldy. So it's more of to just basically destroy more inferior enemies and not to deal with big boss type enemies especially this boss because i think it's more resistant to blunt damage all right so i am actually going to invest in the saw spear just to have a different type of weapon um we've already got an, a hunter axe that's well upgraded but it's a little bit slower of a weapon. So having a saw spear that can be um, 
somewhat faster and more narrow, especially if we get into thin hallway fights, things like that. It's nice to have some diversity. It's not. It's also not taking a big step back just because we have a lot of strength. Eventually, we may consider doing more of a quality build as well. So once we get to a high level of strength, we'll be looking to put our blood echoes into other levels, and it may be something where we just start to invest in a dexterity type method as well. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about the blood gem fortification for the spear yet because we're probably not going to use that in the foreseeable future all right oh yeah let's check out the runes so since we're definitely going into a boss fight shortly um, you may want to consider keeping on the uh, higher blood vial maximum this is a boss fight that could require extensive use of that so we will consider doing that. We're definitely going to replace the formless Odin. And you can see which one is equipped where by seeing the symbol over on the right side. So we see that the formless Odin has these three straight lines. And then we see on the right side, that's our second symbol in the memory slot. So we're going to select that and then go over to acquire more blood echoes. And I'm going to keep it like this for now. Perfect. Now, there's a couple different ways you can get fire paper. You can go over here and spend some insight. Like I said, you don't want to be huge on insight because it can make the game more difficult for you. You also get to see and hear things that you couldn't see or hear before. So it's up to you if you're doing just fine and you like having high insight and like seeing stuff like that, then go for it. Um, I like to spend my insight on armor or attire as soon as it's available or anything else that I might need. So if we happen to become short on fire paper, I'm going to probably purchase it from here. Just because I don't have any other method, um, any other thing to spend my insight on. We can get fire paper from here as well. So if you just got blood echoes to use, you can do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and bounce out of here. <laughs> I'm going to spend my blood echoes on improving my character, and then we're going to head out. Very well, then. Great. Farewell, good hunter. May you find your work. So we'll go to the third one. Okay. Now I'm going to suggest you wait until that solo guy goes where he's headed. Unless you just want to fight him and get his upgrade materials, then you should rush him immediately after you get that lantern. So once he's passed, I'm just going to continue down the stairways. Alright, great. So, what we're doing now, this is... Down here is where we started. This is our cell where we were locked up that we exited. So, this is the area that we ran up to get to the lamppost, and this is the one zone that we skipped intentionally. So, this is the room where we have those two um, witch-like creatures with the daggers that grab you and cut you for big damage. You're going to see one scurry across the doorway to the left. What we need to do is we need to just sprint through the doorway and kind of... We're not going to turn to the left, but we're going to angle a little bit to the left because there's going to be an enemy to our right that's lunging to grab. So if we're at full speed and moving with an angle like this, we should be able to avoid that. So let's let that one go by. There it is. And now I'm going to head this way. See, we can avoid that there. Then I'm going to extend my axe. And we should get the easy kill on both of them this way. The other one just got really distracted. She didn't help out her home, girl. That targeting was really annoying, but it... It did a good thing in revealing that you have some docile enemies. They're still going to attack you, so what you want to do is, um... I like to... I like to move in... From this side over here. You should take two swings, typically.
Okay. And then I go over to the other side. Reason I don't enter that room from that opening is because that could mean we cross that open doorway and those kidnappers might see us. So we don't want to deal with that while we're dealing with these enemies too. Obviously these guys are just cannon fodder. Six blood vials, nice score. This is that doorway that we opened earlier that I was showing you where we didn't have any enemies out here. And I was explaining to you about the enemies in here. So now that should connect that in your mind for you. What we're going to do is poke our head in here and get the attention of the kidnapper on the right. Hello. So once they start doing anything, that means they see you. And you just want to let him creep up to you. He might stop if he loses his vision. So just keep keep his attention here. Again, they go really slow early on in this more passive phase. So you can take your time with this. You don't want to fight him immediately. You want to let him get away from the other guy so that he doesn't start fighting once he hears things going down. So when I'm about here, this is when I start to charge it up. Just rinse and repeat. Oh, that's not good. Again, you can see that mechanic where even though the enemy is dead, as long as I continue my swings that were started in combat, I will get regain from that. Get off of me, buddy. So you can't just like kill the enemy, notice that you still got an opportunity for ring gain and then start swinging. You won't be in that phase, but if the enemy dies, you can still continue your swings. So let's say the enemy's still alive on my first swing, but it's dead. Now I can continue swinging that combo and I'm going to regain even though I'm not hitting the enemy at all. It's dead. So what we can do here is get a nice little sneak in attack. It's not too often you get the opportunity to land a visceral type or a critical attack on that enemy, so you definitely want to take advantage of it. This just connects the room on the right side, so don't worry about that. And this is going to lead us to the boss fight. So if you're not ready for the fight, this is your moment to turn around and go improve your character, whatever you need. So you can see here, it won't start until we get into the arena. So even dropping down here is safe. This is your NPC summon assistance option if you want to do that. Um, this fight can be really frustrating and difficult. It's Even though I can tell you what to do and I may be successful at it the first time, it isn't, uh, it isn't always easy and it's very different every time you fight it. The camera is definitely your enemy here. You do not want to do target lock. I promise you that. You want to focus on the enemy's limbs. So try to stay under it as best you can. If you're standing at range to the enemy, that means you're not dealing damage and it's probably attacking you. And it's got some nice AOE bolt attacks. So we're going to try to stay aggressive with this. Try to stay under it as much as we can to try to damage the limbs. If we damage the limbs successfully, the enemy will collapse. You want to move from limb to limb if you can. Once you damage one limb and it collapses, move to another limb. Uh, this is all good in theory, but when the fight's going down, it gets hectic. You might not even know which limb you actually damaged because we're going to be using the axe like this. So just do what you can. Keep uh, keep your heals going. When you're, when you're taking hits and you can't regain, just immediately heal when you get the opportunity. So I'm going to apply the fire paper once I get into this area here. Don't run in while it's sitting here and thinking you're going to deal all this damage because it doesn't take it. It's got to wake up. All right, so once you see the health bar, you're good to go. I didn't want to hit that hand. Oh, 
bummer. See, when it's charging up like that, that's your opportunity to get some good damage on it. There we go. Now, I know that looked way easier than it usually is. Um, that probably went as good as you can expect. So, again, it's all about understanding the tactic. Even if you die, you know how to beat it, and it's going to work out. You're not losing a whole lot if you die because you can get back here really easily. So don't let this fight frustrate you. Use your fire paper. If you run out of fire paper, you can always get more. It's not too expensive. If you don't want to buy fire paper, you're still going to do a lot of damage because what's happening is you're crippling its its limbs. It's not the fire that's crippling it. Yeah, the fire adds damage to it, but where that big damage is coming in is the crippling of the limbs. You can hear the massive impact of it, and the enemy falls to the ground, which then, of course, you can deal even more damage. And that's why using attacks like this are so good, because you can hit multiple limbs when you're underneath. So even if you're hitting one that's already broken, you're still getting the other limbs simultaneously potentially as well. So you can do massive, massive damage like that. All right, so there's two things that we need to do here. We want to light this lamp. And we want to open this door. So this door is going to take us back to Old Yarnum. And this is going to be a throwback to one of our previous episodes where I explained to you how we had an opportunity to go deal with that NPC on the Gatling gun and make them an ally. Now, they're not an ally in the sense that they're going to help us in any way, but they will give us access to their hunter's badge and they won't fire upon us unless we des d destroy beasts in this zone in Old Yarnum. So... We can make them an ally, but you only want to do that if you know that you're done with this area. Which, we're pretty much done with this, so what I'm going to do is head through here. And we're just going to take the easiest route to get to them. There's going to be some beasts on the right, but they shouldn't attack you if you stay to the left side here. Now there will be some enemies in this fog area here, so... Keep an eye out for this guy. And then his buddy over there is going to aggro. Cool. There's only three of them, so you don't have to worry. Also, you'll see a nightmare creature if you didn't kill it before. Little guy be... Oh, shit! <laughs> I was just sitting here taking my time, and that's why this guy came through. Okay. Felt like I was streaming for a second. That stuff usually doesn't happen to me when I'm making a video. Yeah, so as you can tell, if you take your time in spaces, if you're not progressing forward as you should be after you kill enemies, then definitely roaming mobs have the ability to come at you from behind. So be aware of that. When you pass a mob, it's not necessarily bound directly to that area that you left. So keep keep moving forward. Obviously, I stopped because I'm addressing you guys, having a discussion, but... Alright, so what we want to do here... There's no enemies right here, so don't worry about that. You can go this way, but I'm gonna advise you to go up this ladder here. It's definitely a much safer and faster way. And we're immediately gonna move out and to the right to get to the next ladder as well. So we're going to quick climb. And when we get to the top of this, we're going to move forward and to the left and get on the next ladder. So if you didn't kill this NPC up here, he will be here. And because we're coming from a side where he doesn't already know we're here, he's going to approach us but not be aggressive. He's going to give us an opportunity to be allies. So don't immediately attack. Hello, friendo. Want to talk? Well, well. How did you get in here? It's no matter. What brings you to Old Yarnum? 
I've no interest in matters further up. But you must not disturb this place. The beasts do not venture above and mean no harm to anyone. If you still insist on hunting them, then I will hunt you first. You understand me? Okay. So when we say spare the beast of old Yarnum, that's what makes him an ally in the sense that he doesn't attack us unless we do exactly as he just told us not to if we kill beasts in this zone. Now this is specifically old Yarnum. You can do whatever you want anywhere else. Like he said, he doesn't care. Do not kill beasts in old Yarnum if you want this person to remain an ally. Yes, very good. I no longer dream, but I was once a hunter too. There's nothing more horrific than a hunt. In case you fail to realize, the things you hunt, they're not beasts. They're people. One day you will see. Mm. It's time you got going. But first, a farewell gift. I have no use for it anyway. All right, so this is good. It's going to allow us to buy some new things. And we get the emote or the gesture that we would have gotten if we decided to kill him originally. Now, if you answer the other option, you're immediately going to start fighting. So be aware of that as well. Okay, so if you want to fight him at this point, you can. I don't suggest it. Not at this moment. Maybe you come back later in the game. I'm not sure if he... Uh, it will be facing this way if we return. I think if we return, he'll be with his back towards us like he would be normally. And I think if you want to kill him at that point, you're going to have a much easier time because you can just start firing your pistol and blow him off the edge of the, the building here. So I would suggest going about it that way. Where he's standing right now, you make, your, you make this fight extremely difficult. He's very good in combat, so... I'm not going to tell you to fight this guy because you're most likely going to die in that situation. So use the, use the game mechanics to your advantage. If he's going to be standing on a ledge with his back to you when you climb up this ladder the next time and you want to kill him, then take advantage of that because he'll certainly use that machine gun on you while you're walking through this zone. So it's not, nothing is cheap in that situation. Um, instead of me walking all the way back to a lamp, we'll just go ahead and use these. Bold Hunter's Mark. All right, great. So now what we're going to do is return to the Hunter's Dream. So we did pick up from the boss we defeated. We got the opportunity to buy new things as well. So if you look here, we can now get the Bolt Paper. There's some other things that we can purchase. Um, I would definitely go ahead and take a look at the new weapons that we can get. The Tenitris, obviously we picked up, and like I said, it saved us a shit ton of Blood Echoes. It's by far the most expensive thing we can get at the moment. Um, I do think the Ludwig's Holy Blade is really cool, so it is something to consider, especially if we end up going uh, a quality build. When I say a quality build, it's, it's a phrase from the Souls series where you use um, strength and dexterity, essentially, so... This thing, this Ludwig Holy Blade, actually scales with three stats. So that could be something to consider. It just depends on how, what direction you're going. If you're going to do a new game plus, it's definitely something to consider going forward because you're just going to have so many blood echoes that you're going to need to spend them on levels at some point unless you keep your character level capped for, um, for whatever reason, for the challenge of it, I guess. So yeah, you can... You can start getting whatever gear you want. I mean, we're going to start having a lot of blood echoes, probably more than we're going to know what to deal with. Normally, I would say buy things like blood vials, buy things like upgrade materials, this, that, and the other. But we're playing in such an efficient and intelligently planned out method that you shouldn't be behind in any of the scenarios that we're coming into. Now, of course, when we get to like end game bosses and really tough situations, those fights are, are very specific and you may need certain things for them. But overall, you're going to be over prepared for each zone that we come into with how we're approaching the game. So I wouldn't be too concerned with saving your blood echoes because we're always going to have the ability to get more 
and you've got a big stack of cold dew if you've been doing what I've been suggesting and holding on to that. So if we ever really do get into a bind where we just can't beat a boss and we have zero blood vials and we don't want to farm, but we've got probably a million blood echoes and cold dew, we can just start cashing those in. So keep that in mind. Also, another thing to think about, these blood vials, if I remember correctly, and I could be totally wrong on this, but I believe they get more expensive the higher level we are. So this one's 540 right now. And you gotta know that they didn't cost that much to start the game. So let's let's go ahead and bump up a level real quick. Just because I want to see this. And it may not be per level, it might be like a certain point. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Let's go ahead and jump up a little bit higher. We're gonna do that anyways with these blood echoes, so. Yeah, so I'm not sure what drives the price. Okay, so yeah, I've, I have figured it out. The blood vial cost is relative to what moon phase it is in the game. So as you push time forward, and we've kind of gone over this a little bit in the past, it's, it's also what reminds us to go talk to certain NPCs at certain stages. There's progression in the game, and it's based off of killing certain bosses and interacting with certain things. So the reason that the blood vials are more expensive in today's episode versus the last episode is because after we kill Vicar or Amelia Vicar, I'm going to call it Vicar because I know it upsets some people. So after killing Vicar, we, um, we inspect the skull and the inspecting the skull is what pushes time forward. And that's why the blood vials are more expensive in today's episode as they were in the previous. So that, that explains that. That totally makes sense to me. I thought it might have been tied to levels, which it kind of is, but it's not. It's tied to the time, the moon phase, because you're making more blood echoes based off of the opponents that you're facing. So they're keeping blood vials almost like cost comparative in consideration with inflation. And like we were discussing, we've got so many blood echoes that we're getting that we're eventually not going to have anything to do with them. So that's, that's why the blood vials are so expensive is because they don't want you to make your character. They don't want to make your character so OP that you can buy blood vials for nothing essentially and just auto heal constantly in fights that would make this game pretty broken. So it does make sense. I totally understand it. All right. So we did spend the blood echoes on strength. We haven't picked up anything new that we care to uh, equip or anything like that. If you want to go ahead and change out the higher blood vial maximum uh, maximum number and then go ahead and swap in the visceral attacks, I would suggest that's a good option. We still don't have any um, oath memories yet, so eventually we'll get that taken care of. But yeah, I think we did a good job today, everybody. I'm looking forward to the next one, and I hope you guys are too. Please do join me over on Twitch as well. We live stream frequently. Uh, I do play a lot of the Dark Souls, Bloodborne-ish style games. And I typically will play any game that I make guides for, as well as a few variety games here and there. So looking forward to meeting some of you, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day, night, morning, whatever. Take it easy. Peace!